The muscle up is one of those calisthenic skills that seems just within reach, yet so far away. When I first began my own calisthenics journey, I would see people perform the muscle up and think to myself, that looks pretty simple. I mean, it's a pull up with a dip at the end. How difficult can it be? But whenever I would step up to the bar to actually attempt this myself, I'd get stuck in the transition again and again and again. I watched all the muscle up videos on YouTube, but nothing seemed to work until I understood this one thing. You see, the strength was all there. I was just missing this one singular component. And if you're watching this video right now, I believe the same is the case for you. You've got enough strength. All you need is better understanding of this one moving principle. One principle which makes or breaks the muscle up. One principle which determines whether you can or cannot muscle up. So let's begin. If you truly want to skyrocket your progress, click the top link in the description down below and join our brotherhood of passionate athletes that all want to take their strengths to new levels and unlock awesome skills as well. In the community, we have live calls, courses, monthly challenges and more. So join now whilst you still have the chance. Click the top link in the description down below and I'll see you inside. Cheers. Now, first and foremost, strength requirements. When people talk about strength requirements, you often hear people throw around 10 pull-ups equals one muscle-up. If you can do 10 pull-ups, you have the one muscle-up pretty much in the bank. But this isn't true at all. I mean, I know people that can do less than 10 pull-ups, but they can muscle-up. And similarly, I know people that can go to 20 plus pull-ups, but they can't muscle-up because they don't train with the right technique. So what I would recommend is that you can do a handful of pull-ups and dips. To give a number to it, let's say five to six clean pull-ups and dips. And at that stage, you have the base strength necessary to do the muscle up. So when looking at the muscle up, what we're looking at is three individual components. First is a pull up, then is the transition, and then it's a dip at the top. To stop all of the bullshit exercises, what you need is simply a high pull up, you need a good understanding and execution of the transition, and you need to be able to do the dip. For the high pull up, I've got a video on that right here if you guys are interested. Then for the dip, most people will usually be able to do this, no worries. This is just train dips, you'll get there. This is the easiest part of the entire movement. And third, the transition. That is what I'll be addressing in this video because this is what most people struggle with. All right, so for the transition, what are we looking for? Well, given that a muscle up requires you to get around the bar before you get over it, we cannot simply do a high pull up. It will never work regardless of how high you can pull. Even if you can pull to your hips, simply doing a regular pull up, regardless of how much power is behind it, will never get you the muscle up. When you look at people doing the muscle up on rings, here there's no issue because there's no barrier blocking you from going on top of the rings, right? You have the rings by your side and you sort of pop them by and you can sort of peek through. No worries, you can go straight up. But this isn't the case for the bar muscle up. So what's the solution? Well, rather than going straight up, you need to get around the bar. The best mental image I can give you for getting around the bar would be the Fibonacci, Fibonacci, Fibonacci? spiral. So what you want to do is that you want to start with the pull up, right? But you want to have yourself be a bit in front of the bar before you initiate the movement. And then as you go up, you want to spiral around. So you end up in the bottom of the dip. And there you have it. Congratulations. That's what you need. The Fibonacci spiral. But if you're like me, knowing about this doesn't really help in and of itself. So let's look at the actual mechanics that are involved in actually getting the spiraling, you know, Fibonacci motion that you would need to do this successfully on the bar. Let's get into it. All right, so here are some general cues you wanna keep in mind when you do the muscle up, specifically when you do the transition or this sort of Fibonacci spiral motion. First is that you want to start off with a bit of a swing. So for the swing, this can be minimized over time, but when you begin, you wanna have a bit of a decent swing. Nothing crazy though, because if you have a huge swing in there, you'll just throw yourself off when it comes to, to getting on top of the bar eventually. So incorporate a small swing, can be minimized further later on, but start with a small swing because this will allow you to have a more explosive pull up than if you just start from a dead standstill. That's one thing that's really important about this. And second is that by generating this one swing, you'll have points along your movement curve where you're completely stationary and where your center of mass is not directly under the bar. So what we want to do with this is that we want to time it. So once your center of mass is a bit in front of the bar and your speed is a zero, that's when we want to pull. I'll go over these things more specifically in the entire movement later on, 
this is the general cue you want to keep in mind. You want to have a bit of a swing. Second up is that you want to have straight arms because when you have bent arms, it's a more strenuous position. It's more difficult to hold on to and you're just fatiguing yourself in ways that do nothing for the muscle up. Now, the next cue is going to be how to initiate the pull at the right time. You don't want to initiate the pull as you're still moving in towards that end position at the point where you're furthest away from the bar because if you initiate it before you're at that end point as you're moving towards it, you'll be trying to pull yourself in an opposite direction to where you're already moving. So this will just have strange mechanics of just like leading to or pretty much nothing. You'll struggle to get up. And also, if you start the movement when you're moving away from the end point, as you pull yourself up there, you'll just be way too far away from the bar because you're already moving away. Your body's swinging away from that max end point. So you're pulling yourself in that direction. It's just gonna leave you with too large of a gap between you and the bar to actually get on top of it to that bottom dip position. So what does this mean? It simply means that you want to pull, start the pull at the end of your movement. When your speed for a split second goes to zero, that's where all the action happens. That's where you want to pull. You want to go from an extended position, just snap back, release all of the energy, move into the spiraling motion that will get you up and around the bar. So another thing to keep in mind with this is that you might want to go into you know, like a hyper extended position. So you'll obviously be in a dead hang, you'll be sort of hanging by your arms. What I like to do to generate extra power for this is that as you reach the end point, as your speed gets to zero, at that point, for a split second, what you want to do is that you want to even extend your arms even further up. So think about active hang versus dead hang. Even though you're already in a dead hang, think think like dead hang, dead hang. So you go like even further for a split second and then snap yourself back. Think with like straight arms and then you bend them as you go up at some point. Also, it helps to allow your wrists to move. So, you know, be tight on the bar as you initiate the pull. But as you start to move up, you know, be willing to sort of let that grip slide so you get from this position into a bit more of a deeper angle so you can actually get to a comfortable dip you know bottom dip position i mean eventually with enough pulling power you can use this fibonacci motion do a no dip muscle up i mean i'm still working with mine but basically what would you what you would do for this is i would pull so explosively along this movement path that you end up in a fully topped out locked out position you know top of the dip without having really performed any dip at all. Looks quite awesome, so you know, there's room for scaling this quite far, but uh, we won't worry too much about that for now. The biggest, biggest priority is to get the transition down, such that you get to the bottom of the dip position, and then as you improve, you can look to doing things like the no dip muscle up. So to sum up all of those points, what you want to do in order to achieve the muscle up transition, this spiraling motion, is that you wanna get up onto the bar, you wanna have straight arms, and generate a bit of a swing to begin with. This is that when your center of mass is a bit in front of the bar, at the point where your speed is at zero, the very moment after you've sort of gotten to the max extension and the very moment before you start, you know, drifting back again, at that maximum point, what you want to do is ideally hyperextend even your shoulders and your arms. But, you know, whether you're just in that position, you want to hyperextend, like from that position, you want to snap down with everything that you've got and then move into the transition, right? Make sure to not have too big of a swing because it will throw you off when you when you try to perform the muscle up, but crucially, do it at the right time. And if you get these things nailed down, you've got all of these things, all of these points in succession, so straight arms exploding at, you know, when your speed is at zero and your center of mass is a bit in front of the bar. If you've got all of these things nailed down, you'll beautifully end up in the no, in the bottom of the dip position, and that's beautiful stuff right there. So what if you still can't do the movement even after you've learnt about the spiralling Fibonacci motion and you've tried to practice it? Well, the only thing I can really tell you is to practice this one movement. This is the only thing that actually requires your attention. Doing like muscle up negatives and all of these is not really going to give you anything. Sure, maybe it helps with some basic strength, but as we've already established, you've probably got the strength you already need to do the muscle up. The only thing that is left is to get your body to understand what this transition movement actually feels like. So the only thing I can really tell you is to drill this movement and get it properly down. So if that means that in the start you use a resistance band, that is fine. But if you already have a very good pull up, you have a good explosive pull up, then it's not really necessary. It's not really something that is a, was a requirement. So yeah, if again, if you want to have a better, more explosive high pull up, check out this video it's on screen right now. But for the rest of you, if you use a resistance band to begin with, it's fine. Just make sure that you practice this motion because this is the one thing that is going to give you the muscle up. 
One more exercise that can be interesting for some of you to test out, especially if you struggle with that of like engaging the sort of straight arm explosion, so to speak, from the point of maximum extension, is that you might want to do what I call like straight arm lat pull-ups or lat pull-downs kind of on the bar. So what you want to do is you want to just rock back and forth from, you know, with straight arms all of the time, being a bit in front of the bar and then shooting, just snapping your arms down from being, you know, hanging on the bar straight in front of it, like straight above you, to just snapping those arms down, straight arms and just like really like making those lats do a bunch of work. So yeah, an interesting exercise to try out if you guys feel like it could help you to get more used to that initiation, sort of like the initiation of the uh, of the transition motion. But other than that, like the biggest thing you can do is to just work on the spiraling Fibonacci motion. That's it. So what about some mistakes? Well, there are three common mistakes that people usually make when it comes to the muscle up. First one is not getting the right timing. So what does that mean? Well, if you pull too early, right? Like let's say you're moving around here, right? And you want to pull at the point of maximum extension, more or less here, right? Then if you pull too early, this will fuck you up in the sense that as you start to pull, your body is already moving in the opposite direction and you'll sort of cancel out that movement whilst trying to get up higher, but you don't really get up higher. You just displace your body in this weird way that leads to nothing like the muscle up. Now, conversely, if you start initiating the pull too late, what will happen is that you'll already be moving away from the point of maximum extension at the same time as you're pulling yourself that way. Basically, you'll have too much motion in this sort of backwards direction to the point where like you won't be able to pull yourself back in towards the bar at least not any smoothly if you manage to get this to go at all so the second mistake i see a lot of people do is to not start with straight arms when you have bent arms you're wasting a lot of energy that's one and number two it's difficult to get high up once you have that position i mean that's partly because you're wasting energy but it's just although you start up higher because we can think about this quite logically right it's like if you start with bent arms you start at a higher point, but you won't be able to reach as far as what you would do if you start in a dead hang and just explode up. You see this in climbing as well. It's like people will sometimes try to get up to the next hold by sort of doing a half pull up on the holds they already grab in and then try to shoot for the next. But the better thing in a lot of situations would simply be to just go into a dead hang, even to hyper extend, you know, just sort of bounce off your shoulders and then shoot up for the next or just explode up and get to the next hold. Similarly in calisthenics when we're doing this muscle up, right? Like you get to a higher point, you get higher up by just you starting with the dead hang and just exploding up rather than trying to maintain this bent higher position. Well, initially it is higher, right? But you don't get nearly as high up or nearly as explosive as what you would do if you just started with straight arms. Now the third mistake people make with the muscle up, and this is the biggest mistake that they make, and that is that they think of it as a high pull up as an explosive or as a high pull up. And as I said earlier, like the biggest thing with the muscle up is that you need to learn that when you do it on a bar, you need to get around it, thus using the spiraling motion, as opposed to just trying to pull yourself as intensely into it as possible. The barrier is there, like the bar is, you know, it's planted into the ground and you know, cemented properly. You won't be able to like explode through it, unfortunately. So the only thing that's really gonna save you is the spiraling motion. And so with that, let me reiterate the key spiraling motion. That's really all you need. Fibonacci sequence, Fibonacci spiral. Let that pop into your head. You need to spiral up towards the bar. Remember that Fibonacci spiral. Keep that image in mind. And with that, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.